All right, great. I guess we'll kick it off. My name is Jesse K. I run a blog news outlet called Sound Control. I also run a music agency called New. And obviously, the man next to me needs no explanation and no introduction. This is DJ Funk Master Flex. And we've got a very interesting conversation. Flex has been doing this a long time. And how long have you been DJing for, Funk? Man, um, I probably bought my first set of records, 82, 83. So, you know, that would make me a little ancient, you know. So, but um, that's, probably when I start, that's probably when I started DJing, Jesse. And on Hot 97? Oh, wow. I, uh, hmm. I used to carry records for a couple DJs. One was a guy named Chuck Chillout, who was from my neighborhood, who was in the early stages of hip-hop when Kiss FM was playing music records. And Red Alert, who was a prominent figure from the Zulu Nation, who was also on the radio. I mean, I know I don't have to explain Red Alert to some of you, but that's how I got to see the whole... DJing, and, you know, when I was young, being a radio DJ wasn't cool. Everyone wanted to be Grandmaster Flash, Jam Master J. That was what was cool. So it kind of, you know, took its little turns and got to be in a better place. Hot 97 came along, which was committed, not at first, but uh, did commit to playing hip hop like 24 hours a day. And when I say hip hop, it wasn't just, not just hardcore hip hop, but just like very young urban very few ballads you know that was what hot 97 had became and i had um i had came to the station before they were playing hip-hop to play i played in the middle of the night for two hours i think i used to come on at 2 a.m 2 a.m to 4 a.m and it evolved the station did better and you know something i've seen that happen with a lot of radio stations is when it started to evolve they um they committed and saw it and played it. So that's what that's really why. I mean, we were a model. I, I know people are familiar with Tech and Sway, KML. Like we patterned ourselves. You know, I patterned myself after Tech and Sway show and and KML. Like that was we always paid attention to what rap records were working on that station, and then we would play or copy. And currently, you've got the number one. I just want to make sure this fact is right. The number one highest radio show on all of terrestrial radio. Yeah, like I'm, I'm number one by far. Like I, um, not. Nah, oh, the cockiness is coming. Out, I'm sorry. I'm number one by far, but you know, I'm, I'm probably one of the few DJs uh, around the country still allowed to pick their own music and pick records and you know it's something that i never abused and you know i've always been a person that can really you know i use a lot of different ways of listening to new music to decide what i'm going to play on my show and um it kind of what has made me become strong in a digital space is um you know in flexwetrust.com i do a million uniques i probably do 3 million visits and I do 10 million page views and with the I put a lot of the new music that I get on my site I put a lot of new content but I also do breaking news I do um whatever's going on I'm heavily sports if a <laughs> if a Miley Cyrus picture leaks you know it goes up on my site you know I'm like a one stop shop and because I understood that space I, I want to get to the digital just before we get there, I just kind of want to establish a little history and just understand. So you were there in the early stages at Hot 97. Yes. And, and the early stages of New York hip hop. You were one of the first radio DJs. What point did you start to see that the genre of hip hop was starting to take off? Mm. And, and, and what kind of – like what changes mm. were happening when this trend was really starting to grow? I think 91, 92 – Coming out at 88, maybe the end of the Run DMC era, the end of the Kane era, I started to, you know, it became a little more conscious. The fun and the conscious, you know, you had the Tribe Called Quest that was starting to do very well. The De La Souls were kind of tapering down a little bit, but there was just a lot of, 
you you couldn't just have a hit record anymore and sell a million albums that was going away people wanted to buy into the arts you know like you know the cypress hills of the world were coming naughty by nature it was just a, a good time i think that i don't think we've ever scaled back from that era i think that and it only got bigger and grew out more because look that brought you leaders of the new school which then brought you buster rhymes you know tribe request brought you q-tips and then you, you start to get solo artists out of the whole deal so i think the 90s was key because it was a, a, a period where we thought it might it might go away and it, do you think it had to do with a lot of the there was a lot of music coming into this genre there's a lot of success happening people were very open in the 90s to they were very hungry for what street you were from uh, your nationality your history what you believed in and i think it was also a time too where you know mtv had become more open to the music there used to be something called the box that used to play videos i think you paid and you played for it after hot 97 you know uh chr radio you know the pgc's of the world and and every place else power 106 in la all opened up to the format so i think that that was the beginning of it you know we didn't know it was going to be mainstream but it was getting more ears more eyes on it so you've been doing this now 20 plus years at the top of the industry day in day out like Correct. six days a week yes how do you stay excited how do you stay inspired um i always loved uh I love the music, but I love a challenge. I love when people tell me I can't do something. I remember when K. Capri and a couple other DJs were hot. I'm a big K. Capri fan. I'm a big uh, Clark Kent fan. And I, and at the time, I remember a lot of people telling me I couldn't make it. I had a funny voice. My voice was nasal. I didn't have the the, the traditional look as, as what was successful at the time. So, I mean, it made me strive, you know, work harder. I wanted to... Um, I always love playing music and giving people new music and like that was always I did it for free. I didn't know I could make a living off. I just love that's what I loved and that's you know when you're in search of new music all the time, it kinda keeps you ahead of wherever the new music's coming from, I'm gonna be there. And you're known for breaking records if Flex drops a bomb on a song, it it could turn into a global smash. Mm-hmm. With the internet and, and music being so much more ubiquitous and harder to find and and really all over the place, not just coming from central outlets. How are you finding new music now? Well, the way I find me, new music is um, I've always been uh, liking to look through the Internet, you know, when it started to, you know, come from the mixtapes. There was that time. And then after that started to pass, you know, people used to tell me, oh, there's no mixtapes, there's no this, there's no tastemakers. You know, people in radio, uh, executives, and not just at my company, across the board that are 67 years old, they say there's no tastemakers. And then I I felt that the tastemakers were online. I mean, um, there was always college radio. Sometime I'd sift through there and get music. But... I think in the digital space, I start to see all the websites, all the different music, and that's kind of like, you know, listening, seeing what's out, kind of, uh, I, I must say though, if it, for 2014, because I have a, a site and an app, you know, me personally, I'm able to go and look in the back of the WordPress, look at Google Analytics and see when a song goes up, how many people like it or want it. I mean, there's not... You can't jimmy that. You can't. The labels can't buy it. And it. Like, you see what the song is worth and what people are talking about. I mean, I don't necessarily pay things to, like, trending topics on Twitter because I think you can buy that. I think people can stir that up. But that's, like, how I'm looking for music constantly. And how's the radio business? Just to harp on it one more time. How's the radio business changed over these different revolutions and over the the past 20 years? I think the radio business, I think it's missing, I think the radio business is missing a couple things. I think it's missing paying attention to where people are 
getting their music from. I think it's probably one of the most important things. They have to pay attention to where they're getting the music from. Where people are listening to music. And I think sometimes radio, not being on demand on that dial sometimes can hurt you. And I think that, look, Clear Channel is my competitor, but I do like the... I like the iHeartRadio app. I like, um, I think that's very cool. I like when a radio station does a good app. I think that that's important. I think that phone has replaced <laughs> the Walkman. The phone has replaced computers. The phone is, uh, you know, it's being, it's treated like, you know, it goes everywhere with a person. And part of me wanting to have an app, part of me wanting to have a website is I want it to be, aggressive and I I'm a Leo and I want attention and I want to be in that phone and I want you to look at me and hear me and see that you know I'm here so that that's then you you can't just do it you have to do it and know how to do it and stay there so does radio does it does it know that's the industry that it it needs to evolve or does it feel Um, more like let's stay in what we do which is sell radio ads and, and build out stations um I could speak for Emma's and Ms. Communications, where I work, I've just been made creative director of Loud Digital, which is their digital part of their company. And they are making an aggressive push at being not just strong in the digital space, but strong in advertising. You know, my site and my app will be exclusively in their network. And I think there are some companies that are learning how to do it do i think it's being done fast enough no and i think that look a radio right now is used in the car and it's used you know you may log on or you may to a a website the music but that's what you that's what you do that's what you that's what you use that radio for and you want the app and you want access to it on your phone. You have to be entertaining there too. Like that, that's what's important. And I think that some radio station companies are not doing that. So you launched in flex. We trust in 2010. What was the inspiration there? What was the strategy behind that? Well, you know, uh, tap was always, into the digital space and he always um would encourage me to take a look and to pay attention and first it was just a tool for music and then i built a site and i just wanted to house the uh the pictures at first i think i don't know what was one of those one of those flick flicker i think was hot and i just want some place to put my pictures and everything and we started noticing it was getting traffic and then the best part of you know, a little trial and error, man. We started, we put Google Analytics on, so we started to see what posts were reacting. And then I started to see in WordPress what people liked, and I just enhanced it. And then put very interesting content up and content that I'm into. And the site started to it started to go. It started to, to go. And then, you know what? I learned about a few artists that way on my own site. I remember... I was posting Wiz Khalifa in the early stage, and I was like, wow, this is getting a lot of traffic. I remember ASAP Rocky before they even had any records out or doing well. I remember it getting a lot of uh, a lot of hits onto my site. So a lot of the things were I was starting to learn about and also learned that it was a different world, like radio hits and Internet hits. I, I started to see the difference. So then you launched an app. When did you launch the app? This year, right? Uh, I want to say April. April. We launched, we launched the app in April, and 300,000 downloads is what I'm up to now. We're doing uh, 16 million page views a day, and you know, new music. We're putting new music through there constantly when I get it, you know, when it's online. Like, you know, one-stop shop, as well as uh, sometimes uh, breaking news stories and uh, music videos. If You know, if you're a kid, you want to know what's going on, man. So how do you use it differently? How does it complement the website? Is it Why wouldn't you just have a mobile version of Inflex We Trust? I think for me as a DJ, I had noticed uh, – 
Safari isn't as cool anymore. To well, I mean, what I use Safari, but I mean, I mean people use like, but whatever, whatever place you go to, some people don't want to go to a website anymore. Some people want to go to an app and. How many people don't come out of their app world? You have your you have your Instagram, you have your Twitter, you have whatever apps you're into in your app section, and you don't want to come out of that. So I wanted to have a strong presence in that area. And then you launched it with a mixtape. Did that help you gain more traction for the app? You know what? I normally put my mixtape on, on labels, and that was the first time I put my mixtape on uh, out digitally. And that was the, I mean, we took off from there. I remember we did like twenty or 30,000 downloads that day. I mean, it was great. It was uh, it was great. It was the first time I put out, we put out like 50 songs. I've been recording for months. You know, very good. Uh, it was a good way to launch. Is it the death of a mixtape? Do people still want that? Canal Street exclusive? or people- You'd be surprised, especially from the recession. A lot of people still, you know, have a CD player or have the cassette that goes, I guess, in the CD, the little cassette that plays the CDs or plays the, uh, you know, play your iTunes and play how you, however you want to play your music. So that is still, it's still there. I think it's a, it's fragmented. If I hope I'm using the right word, but it's, it's. I hope I'm using the right word. I might not be, but that's. It's still important. It's still important to you know the CD player for the for the mixtapes like list. People want to download. People want to play their iTunes through the car. It's still. It's still important. How has technology changed actual art of DJing? Mm. Well, um, Serato, of course, is. Uh, are there any DJs in here? DJ, okay. So, that did you have vinyl before that, or who had vinyl before they were DJing? Your vinyl. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, Serato has uh, Serato has made it so that, of course, you can have a deeper collection. You can have more music. You can, uh, you know, it has given birth to more DJs, and but in the same. Place it has made DJs become more creative because if you want to stand out, you really got to you know put your effort in. So I come from both eras of the vinyl and the Serato, but I think you know it's good. There's more DJs, but you know if you were uh, half-assing it, you know you're in trouble. Can you DJ with MP3s? Are there going to be app DJs? Do you see it going more that route, and does that take away from the the craft of what a, a DJ was? Um. From what I come from, it does take away from the craft, but I do have a respect for, um, you know, I've witnessed that turntable since the day I've ever said I want to DJ. So I have a different love for it than um, people in here that might be younger. So when I do see (laughs) the two turntables mixer download, I don't want to use the word funny, but I want to say it's, you know, it's awkward for me. I would love for people to learn the craft or, you know, but, you know, but I've played with it and it's not necessarily easier. It's still some thought to it, but uh, it's not, not, it's not something that I love though. I would love to, I don't like the CDJs. I'm sorry. I know I'm upsetting people, but I, I don't, I don't like it. I use it. If the club has it, I will use it. I don't want to take a picture in front of it. I don't want to be near it. It it, it, it annoys me, but, you know, what am I going to do? So one more question for me, and then we'll open up to the audience. But you've got radio. You're finding records. You're breaking records on radio mm-hmm. and on your app and on the website. Are there other platforms are you seeing developments in the tech space? I know you're on the pulse mm-hmm. that are exciting to you. Uh, or is it interesting to you to get into business with other platforms that can help you break your music? I've been paying attention to iTunes just launched their streaming service. Of course, there's Pandora and there's Spotify and there's um, a lot of, I think, good streaming services for the hits. I would like to see – I'd like to see it – come together a little better 
or when I say better, meaning I think it is going to be the evolution of this, is for a lot of these streaming services to really be radio, they're going to have to break artists, and they're going to have to break music, and they're going to have to break talent. And I think where the game is going to go, I hope, is you're going to be you have to be able to go to a streaming service and hear the hits. Here's something new. Here's something unsigned. I think in the same place, just like you can go to a, your favorite site and hear. Okay, this came out today. This came out a couple months ago, and this is what someone. This is someone's demo or whatever it might be. Because I think some of the streaming situations are losing sight of. A kid likes to, everyone goes to their favorite website to hear their music sometimes daily and they listen and they want to be able to talk about it, tweet about it, know what's going on, share it with their friend and have knowledge of this new music that's out. I can't get that experience right now in real time on any of these live stream services and it's not necessarily a bad thing. But I think that's where we have to get to for for you to be able to go into the digital space as a person making music and get discovered, heard, and played. I think that's what it has to get to. All right. I know we only have a couple more minutes, so I want to just open it up in case there's some from the audience. Go ahead. First of all, thank you for doing what you do. I was in Brooklyn for nine years, and I had a show at WFMU in Jersey City, and all I listened okay. to was FMU. And then you, not because you were breaking hits. That was a reason you have good taste, too, but it's because you're there interacting with the music. Like, I'm here. I want to hear you dropping bombs. Like, I was in the car. Remember when you played the new Nas album for the first time? And, okay. And, like, for me, it's about creativity and interacting with the music. You, like, I don't care if I can go to, I can go to any service. I can torrent anything I want and get the songs I want. I want to hear you, you know, winding it back, you know, playing those first four bars over and over again. That's what I think is missing from radio. That's why I love WFMU, and that's why I love your show. Gotcha. And that's Thank like, you. In, you know, Jack FM, whatever, Clear Channel, like, X number, like, that's what's missing from radio, I think. And, like, how do you square that? Like, I feel, I feel we're losing the personality there. Um. You mean with the streaming services that you're losing the personality or in radio? Yeah, like you you said you said radio needs to have a place people can go to hear the hits and break new songs, but you're you're to me you're not giving yourself enough credit. They want to hear you interacting with a song in in a physical way what you're doing on the turntables or with, you know, the instant replay or whatever. Um I think a problem that radio's having is um I think, you know, I'm still I still consider myself a radio DJ that does other things. You know, that's why I, I, I grew up on that love. I'm not sure if a kid now who wants to be on the radio, you know, is as uh, radio or orientated. I think for a lot of people, radio is a step into being an entertainer and getting to television and doing other things. You know, like... Look, do I have to still be on the radio six days a week? Not really. You know, I love it, though. I, I don't think everyone loves, you know, loves it. I think Dick Clark loved it. You know, like, he, he, did he have to come out and go do something? No, but if you love it, yes. I'm not sure if um that passion, uh, I got that passion from DJs like Chuck Chillout and Red Alert and Molly Mall and Mr. Magic, what I witnessed I saw something. I saw how the music excited them, and that excited me. So, um, I I might be I might be the I might be the last of the breed a little bit. I might be. So take something from this side too. I guess go ahead. We can get a little extra 10, 15 minutes. I'm sure the people who have to come in next don't have as many people in here as we do. I'm just joking. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going, Flex? My name is Anthony. I work with DJCity.com. How about you? Also work with Felly Fell and used to work at Ski TV. So it's great to hear you talk, and I appreciate you coming down. My question for you is, since you're involved with so many different things, uh, radio sounds like that's kind of your base. Um, how, do you, how do you think terrestrial radio can survive in the coming years? Mm. Um, it's obviously 
you know, struggling a little bit compared to what it used to. How do you see it staying relevant in, in um, the long term? It's not going to stay relevant if it doesn't adapt. It's good. If they don't adapt, they're going to die. And that's, look, you know, the things that I've done for myself, the reason why I can be here today is because I knew the importance of having a website and not having someone else run it or just having, like, you know, taking a small team of people I trust and we get together and we and, and do what we need to do and be effective and also do it better than everyone else. Before I came in the game, sites were putting out music and everything. They were getting that music from my show. I'll say it now. They get mad at me, but every hot music website, me like a dummy, I'm playing the record with the bomb, yelling over it. They would take it and put it on their site, get metrics. I'm not mad at nobody, but the game stopped. So I'm like, I'm going to put out a site. And then I also realized the importance of real time, meaning if I play a song at 7 o'clock on my radio show, it's on my website in two minutes. It's on my app in four minutes. Before I got into the digital game, a song would play around on the Internet for two or three months. Maybe you find it. Maybe you didn't. So what I did was by doing this, it's, it's rushing everything along like, okay, everybody make their decision at one time. If you listen to me on the radio, tell me if you like it. If you on your web or your phone, tell me if you like it. You know, get everything at once. And I think I had to make that and. No disrespect to Emma's Broadcasting, but just radio as a whole, they didn't have a the a radio station website is corny. I no, it's it's corny. You don't you don't like the way it looks. It's not giving you what you need. Nothing. And I think I need something that to be cool. So and I need it. And when the, the app started popping, I was in that space early as well. My mobile site, we were out the box early with a good mobile site you know and some people think if you don't if you don't um some radio station companies think if you don't pay attention to it and you don't then it's going to go away it's not going to go away it's going to swallow you up and you're going to be done that's what i think and on, i think on that note she, yes. she, that's our time thank you all thank you fun